My name is Barb Sackle. Today's video is made possible by QuiltWoman.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to put a backing together for the quilt behind me. The top is completely made, and now I need to find fabric for a backing. Oh, got that. Now, let's put it together so that I have my backing ready for the quilt. Okay, so I took my quilt and I folded it in half from top to bottom. And I laid it out on my batting to see if it would fit the batting uh, lengthwise. And it does. If this, this from top to bottom does go past your batting size, then you would need to lay your quilt out the other direction so your sides would be here instead. So you run into trouble with this when you usually have a king. Then you have to go sideways. But this fits nicely, and I know that I can get away with backing, just two pieces of backing, because I have less than 40 inches here. So, I have my backing all ironed, and I, join, I just laid it out, the two ends laid out together. And now I'm going to put the backing, the two layers, about four inches over on each side of my quilt. And I don't measure. I, again, I just let the quilt do the measuring for me. Just like uh, it measured out the batting for me. I went about three to four inches beyond the edge of each one. Now I laid out my double layer of backing and about four inches past the side of the quilt I'm just going to cut all four layers at once. And this is uh, just a rough cut. I don't do anything fancy here. Now my backing has been cut to size. So what I'm going to do is leave it just like it is and take it up onto a table and pin it together. So let's do that next. Okay, so here's our backing. Uh, I laid it out on the table so that you can see the whole thing. But you can do this on your cutting mat uh, on just a smaller table if you'd like. But I just wanted to show you the whole thing. Now, I cut it together. I haven't um, taken it apart. I just left it as it is. And you'll notice that my edges are kind of aligned. And what's going to happen is these edges are never, never going to line up. So if you try to take a backing and put these edges, like edge to edge perfectly, that's how you get the ripples in your quilt. So because of the stretch and, and whatnot that goes through uh, when this fabric is made, it, the edges just are not going to line up. So when I lay this out like this, I smooth it out, and then I just pin it as the fabric lays. So I'm going to peel back this one top layer, and I know I have the back of this and the front of this, and I'm going to pin these two together all the way down just as it lies and I'm going to pin about every six inches and you notice how I did not try to match the edges I'm doing it as the fabric lies and if you peek under there you can see that there's almost a half inch difference of how the fabric is actually joining up to each other and I'm just going to go down down the length of the fabric and now it's off it's still off about a half an inch so that's pretty good so now that's pinned in place and clean up my pins now I can take this to the sewing machine see how it came out in the back there not even at all but I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew at least one inch in from the edge and that'll take care of all the discrepancy on either side. And because this is lying flat, your backing is now going to lie flat with the two pieces joined. Mostly, as a long armor, what we see when people join their backs is one side is taut and one side has this bubble. So by putting your backing together like this, both sides will be taut and lay flat. So this is the, what you want to do. So let's take this to the sewing machine and sew one inch down the entire length of this, these two pieces. Okay, so now we have our piece in front of us. And I'm going to pick a line along the edge of my plate. 
and it's going to be the line furthest out and it's going to be roughly one inch and I'm just going to follow that line with this edge again roughly because uh, this is not even so I'm going to do the best I can remember to take out your pins as you go also you'll notice that I have uh, folded this in accordion style and then laid the edge out on a table so that it doesn't go like this and pull it down it has to be um, has to be put out like that so that the weight is divided evenly. So this is going to give me a clean seam. So let's get going. Uh, we're going to do an inch like I said. I'm just following that line. Notice my hand is out here on the edge of the table as a counterbalance so that there's no pull so that I can maintain that one inch. Now, we have one inches here. On some fabrics, because it's the end, and like I said, when they manufacture it, there's a pulling, you might see this as a, a little bit gathered and pulled. Some people cut that edge off. Um, this edge looks pretty good to me, so all I'm going to do is iron it open. So I'm going to take it to the iron machine. I'm going to iron this open first from the back side, and then I'm going to turn it over to the front and iron it again and then I'm going to go into the middle part and on a double layer iron out that center crease that comes with the fabric. So I am going to iron this up and let's see what we get. Okay, so I brought the backing over to the ironing board and the first thing I'm going to do is while it's still in a double layer is I'm going to iron out that center crease that we didn't touch the first iron through. I just ironed them double layer because we have, I want to keep the ironing, you know, as simplistic as possible without you having a lot of excess fabric everywhere. So I just do a double crease, and this, this looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is open this up and still iron from the back side. And I'm going to iron this open. So just like we did before, my thumb is pressing we did this on strip uh, when we did our strip piecing and we showed the iron and I would always use my thumb as a press and you can see looking at what I've ironed the different sizes um, and again if you had tried to match them up you would have been in a world of hurt. So let's continue this down the rest of the way and you can see I'm letting my thumb finger press it a little bit. Now that is done. Let's turn it over. Now I'm going to give this one final press on the top where my seam is and you can see that it turned out pretty nice. This backing is flat, perfectly flat all the way across. With the fabric you can't see the seam but more importantly, one side is not bubbled up more than the other. And this is the kind of backing you want to have for your quilts. Thank you for joining me today. If you like the quilt shown, it was a Lilac Festival available at quiltwoman.com.